this was an extraordinary session of the Executive Council um, and uh, it was called um, by the Assembly uh, of Heads of State last time we were here at the February summit and it became very critical because the issue of the future of the African Union uh, was at stake in the context of the forthcoming elections of the African Union Commission leadership in February next year. Um, when we were here for the summit, the Heads of State Summit, uh, there were legal and technical issues that required urgent clarification um, so that the process of transiting from the leadership of the African Union Commission today to the next leadership uh, through the proper electoral process uh, can be done smoothly. So this session was very important and that is why we came and uh, we were now receiving the report from the PRC uh, with specific uh, asks uh, for decision making. This was a very important uh, session uh, and uh, I'm happy to, to report that uh, there was unanimous acceptance and adoption uh, of the recommendations of the PRC. This was critical because uh, it affirmed uh, the position that had been taken earlier by the Assembly of uh, Heads of State that in order to bring more equity and diversity uh, within the African Union, the rotational principle uh, becomes very, very important. And therefore the decision that was taken uh, was that in accordance with the alphabetical order, the East African region will now have the opportunity to offer its candidate for the chair of the African Union Commission. And the Northern region shall have the opportunity to offer its candidates for the deputy chair. This is uh, very significant. Uh, and the other regions shall now have an opportunity to offer leadership for the other six uh, commission uh, positions. The decisions were unanimous, yes, which was a very, very significant step uh, away from where we started. You know, we had started with a, a fairly broad uh, division um, last time we were here. But the conversations by the PRC and by the Executive Council of Ministers has brought us much closer together. And uh, I can say that it was literally a 100% uh, decision. But unanimous is good enough. Well, uh, I think the way we proceed from here is that first of all, uh, as Kenya and as a member of the East African region in that context, we actually want to appreciate and thank uh, our brothers and sisters in the African continent for making it clear, uh, removing all ambiguities, that it is the turn of East Africa to provide leadership or to offer leadership in the African Union. So that is a very important statement and equally for the deputy in the north, northern region. What it means for us uh, in the East African region uh, is that effectively um, all technical and legal hurdles have now been removed and uh, Kenya can now formally uh, submit uh, uh, the, the candidate for the region uh, and uh, really uh, I don't have to mince my words anymore nothing should really bar and nothing bars uh, the opportunity for Raila to become the candidate for the region and God willing the chair of the African Union Commission. First of all uh, Raila is a very experienced uh, public uh, officer. Uh, Raila has been Prime Minister of the Republic of Kenya. Uh, Raila has got strong Pan-African credentials. Raila um, uh, has seen both hot and cold, if I may use such terminology. Uh, and he has shown the capacity to bring people together and to reconcile 
uh, even under difficult uh, circumstances. And looking at the kind of challenges we are facing on the African continent, issues around conflict, food insecurity, um, the need to foster greater integration and enhance economic activity along the, uh, in the African continent. We see him, uh, in him an opportunity for the African Union and Africa as a whole uh, to be able to work uh, to advance our objectives uh, much more uh, as we go forward. Um, the roadmap from here to February is uh, it's going to be very busy, uh, let me put it that way. Uh, first of all, uh, there's the formal process where all the paperwork uh, is, is submitted. And then we shall not waste any more time. Uh, we will want to work within the region, lobby all the, uh, the, the countries in the region, and then extend uh, our unified position uh, to the rest of the Africa, African continent. Uh, and this is going to be uh, really presenting uh, the credentials of our candidate and what Kenya can also offer through uh, the candidate. And as you know, uh, we have also seen um, a very robust engagement uh, from the President of Kenya, uh, President William Ruto, on issues uh, around climate change, on issues of reforming the international um, financial architecture uh, on issues of consolidating and improving Africa's footprint uh, in, in the global space. So we see this as an opportunity where the synergy uh, can be consolidated. Uh, and indeed, uh, the African heads, when they were here in February, uh, also uh, nominated President William Ruto to take up Kagame's mantle in furthering the reform process within the African Union. So we believe there's a strong synergy and uh, we are offering uh, Africa a very credible candidate. One of the things is that uh, we need, we will need to be very coherent. And uh, I think before I, I, I I maybe conclude my remarks. It is important that I acknowledge the role played by the ambassador here, Orina, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs team uh, that all worked to make sure that we have arrived where we are. These men and women, both here in Addis and in Nairobi, uh, have been actually burning the midnight oil to make sure that we have logical, well-reasoned uh, uh, arguments anchored in law on the challenges that we believe have been now resolved by the Executive Council of the Ministers. So, so as we go forward, uh, that unity of purpose, that teamwork, um, and also bearing in mind that we'll need to work with our brothers and sisters in the other countries as well, will be absolutely essential going forward, not just for the election, but indeed for the well-being of the African Union as a whole.